Hello and welcome to the John the Baptist podcast, where we test all things through scripture and from a fundamentalist perspective. I am your host, John the Baptist. Now, today isn't really a full length episode or podcast or anything like that. It's really just an addendum to the previous episode I made, episode 15, regarding the historical doctrine of the Trinity, where we went through the ancient creeds and confessions. We went through the Athanasian Creed and proved from scripture how it is an accurate a summary and representation of what the Bible teaches on the doctrine of the Trinity. Now, in passing, however, we also mentioned the controversy that erupted at Stephen Anderson's church, Faith Word Baptist Church, in 2017 regarding the Trinity and oneness and all that. And so the official narrative, at the time at least, was that Anderson had a deacon, uh, Tyler Baker, and he was about to send Tyler Baker out to start another church in Jacksonville, Florida. But right before he sends his deacon out to start another church and ordain him as a pastor and start another church, he catches ear that supposedly Baker had been teaching people in the congregation oneness doctrine, modalistic doctrine of the Godhead and had been rejecting the Trinity. And so when Anderson supposedly catches ear of this, he kicks Tyler Baker out. He calls him out publicly. Uh, no longer sends him out and, you know, makes a bunch of videos attacking him and, and not only kicked Baker out, but other people along with him as a result of this controversy uh, because he was teaching oneness and modalism and was gen- denying the Trinity. That was the official narrative. Now, I have since, and that was the narrative I believed, by the way. Now, I have since come upon new information to add context to this whole controversy that happened in Anderson's church in 2017. In short, Pastor Tyler Baker reached out to me. Okay, so he saw my video and he sent me a message on Facebook. And he, by the way, yes, he's Pastor Tyler Baker now. He actually did end up going to start that church in Jacksonville. Uh, He got ordained by some other church. And so this is, here he is with his family, Pastor Tyler Baker, Valley Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida. So Pastor Baker actually reached out to me. He said he wanted to talk to me regarding the video and he was very polite. So I agreed to, you know, to, you know, have a phone call with him the next day, which we did. I believe that was yesterday. It was yesterday that I spoke to Pastor Tyler Baker or maybe the day before at this point. Maybe it was two days ago at this point. But in any case, he was he wanted to explain to me that he actually was not one. This he was not a modalist. And he actually told me before we had a conversation, he told me he actually agreed with my video. And so I thought that was interesting, given that I thought the whole time he was a oneness heretic. But I still wasn't convinced when he said that, to be honest with you. So uh, I did. I called him the next day, gave me his number. I called him the next day. And I went into this phone call thinking that I was going to talk to a oneness heretic, uh, try to convince me that he wasn't actually a heretic or whatever, and try to convince me that his view is biblical. But to my surprise... Um, I guess I should have started off with this. First of all, Pastor Tyler Baker is an Orthodox Trinitarian. Okay, he affirms Nicaea. He affirms the Athanasian Creed uh, and all of the historical Protestant confessions, which are also in agreement with Nicaea and the Athanasian Creed. You know, the Westminster Confession, the London Baptist Confession, any confession you can think of in Christian history that affirms the doctrine of the Trinity as stated in the Athanasian Creed. He affirms all those things. And so I went into this conversation thinking I was talking to a heretic who was going to try to convince me. But much to my surprise, I found out that wasn't the case. And so I ended that conversation realizing that I was talking to a brother in Christ and to, uh, you know, a legitimate pastor uh, of, you know, of a, of a local church. And so we, we, we didn't just speak about that. We spoke about other things. Maybe I'll get into that later. But basically, although he stated that he has grown in his understanding of the Trinity and that he used to use much uh, less clear language on the doc. He, he used to be must. He used to be less clear on the doctrine, and he used bad language, imprecise language in the past. He has never been anything close to a oneness modalist. And I probed Pastor Baker to see what he actually believed. I mean, I, I asked him specific questions because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just being, uh, you know, manipulated or lied to. And I mean, I I asked him several questions, and he affirms. Three eternal, distinct persons within the Godhead. So he, he, he says that rejection of that is heresy. Um, he explicitly rejects any notion of oneness or modalism. He considers the belief of a one-person Godhead also to be heresy. He rejects any notion that the distinction in the Godhead is that of manifestations or characters or roles. He considers that heresy as well. 
And also, he rejects any idea of a hierarchy or subordination within the Godhead, uh, in contrast to the false doctrine of Anderson and of the new IFB, their false view of the Trinity. And so, in short, as already stated, he is a historical Orthodox Trinitarian. Okay, and I I made sure of that. I mean, we we spoke for an hour, and I asked him several questions. So this begs the question: If Baker, if Pastor Baker, is not in fact a modalist and never has been, then what was that controversy about? What happened? And looking back at how how Anderson has progressively gotten further and further away from orthodoxy on the Trinity, the explanation that Pastor Baker gave me makes a lot of sense, and I believe him. So basically what happened was that Pastor Baker was reacting, or as he admits now in retrospect, overreacting to Anderson's borderline polytheistic view of the Trinity, which is three wills, three centers of consciousness, a hierarchy or subordination within the Godhead. That's some of the stuff that I covered in the last video, and I debunked that using scripture. And by the way, this is new to me, but also they described three bodies in the Godhead. So you see how their view, the view of the new IFB is, for, you know, is going further and further away from orthodoxy and embracing a heretical view of the Godhead. But anyway, as a result of listening to Anderson's unorthodox, borderline polytheistic view of the Trinity, Pastor Baker began to express disagreement with that view, and that ultimately led to his expulsion from the church and Anderson's public condemnation of him. Now, at the Pastor Baker admits that at the time he did use bad language in expressing his view of the Trinity. Uh, specifically, he was rejecting the use of the term persons. And part of the problem was that he, as he put it, he had allowed Anderson to define the term persons for him. So he just took for granted that what Anderson said persons meant was what the Orthodox Trinity, what the historical Trinity had taught. And the way per Anderson defined persons, as we already have seen, is different wills, different positions of authority, which is not historical Trinitarianism. Because basically what the church has always meant when it says there are three persons in the Godhead is simply someone who can say I to the exclusion of another. And so in context of the Trinity, that would mean that the Father is not the Son and the Son is not the Holy Spirit. And yet there are three, one God, right? That, that is what we have meant by persons. Right, that the Father can say I, and that means not the Son, or that the Son can say I, and that means not the Holy Spirit. And so, as a side note, this is why historically Christianity has used the term persons to define the distinctions in the Godhead. And, and by the way, this is the emblem or the symbol that came out of the Athanasian Creed. This is how they summarized the Athanasian Creed back then, was that you see here, the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father. And yet the Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. And there's only one God. And the reason why the church has historically used the term persons is because it is what comes closest to describing what the Bible teaches on the subject of the Godhead. Namely, this symbol that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are all eternal and they are not each other. And yet they are all the one true God. And so this is why the term persons is correct and has been historically accepted by the church, while the terms modes or manifestations or characters or roles have been rejected as heretical and are not accurate representations of what, the, of what the Bible teaches. Because those terms, modes or manifestations or characters or roles, they denote that the distinctions of the Godhead are not real and they're not eternal, and they're not personal, and it's just one person shape-shifting, or changing his mask, or something like that, or changing his role, his hat, or something like that, and what that does, is it ultimately causes you to, for example, deny the sun, right, because you're denying that the sun is actually a historical, uh, eternal person, and so you're saying he's really just a mask, or a mode that God shape-shifts into, and that is, that's a denial of the Son. And when you deny the Son, you're also denying the Father. Okay, so this is why oneness modalism is, a, is unorthodox. It is damnable heresy. It puts you outside of the Christian faith. Okay, and this is what church history has always bore witness to and agreed upon. So, to get back on track here, Pastor Baker's rejection of the term persons at the time caused him to try to reinvent the wheel, so to speak in attempting to describe the trinity without using historical language and so what that did is it really just caused a lot of confusion as to what he was actually trying to say and what he meant which was actually all he was trying to say was that anderson's view of the trinity is borderline polytheism and he was correct in saying that 
Now, to add more confusion to the situation, several of the church members who were also kicked out as a result of this controversy at Faith Word Baptist Church, they were publishing a lot of videos almost immediately after getting kicked out, and they were actually teaching oneness and modalism okay and two names that come to mind one is elliot and i can't remember his his last name but elliot another would be gary kirchway who was kind of popular because he was the missionary from faith ward baptist church and he was popular within the movement they were making videos and there's videos by gary kirchway still up on youtube right now where he openly says he agrees with oneness modalism and their teaching of the godhead Okay, you can find that on YouTube. I saw it literally yesterday to you know to verify that that I was correct in that. And so I, for one, uh, imputed the oneness modalism being taught by these other people unto Pastor Baker because if I remember correctly, I forgot to verify this with Pastor Baker, but I don't think he actually publicly responded to any of Anderson's videos or attacks for like a month or more, right? So he took he he took some time. Uh, Probably, you know, it was a very emotional time, you know, getting kicked out and all that happening. So he, he didn't respond for a while. And it was only these other guys who were uh, making videos. They were the only ones who were responding. And so, you know, what I and others assumed was that Baker also believed what they believed. And well, anyway, subsequent to all this drama, as the years have gone by, Pastor Baker told me that he has grown in his knowledge and understanding of the, tr uh, of the Trinity. And he has uh, eventually came to fully embrace the Orthodox Trinity as expressed in the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed, and the Protestant Confessions of Faith as well. You know, we're talking about the Westminster Confession, the London Baptist Confession, etc. What Orthodox Christianity has always affirmed regarding the Godhead. And so in the end, it, it's funny how, how things work out. Anderson is the one who is teaching an unorthodox and maybe even heretical version of the Godhead while Pastor Tyler Baker has been orthodox, he's been the orthodox one all along, albeit there, has, there was a growth in his understanding and he didn't always use the correct language and all that. But, you know, it's funny how that all works out, especially as you see the direction of the new IFB. It's becoming increasingly more a clown show and they're increasingly uh, less and less orthodox. You know, they, they've basically left any semblance of orthodoxy in, in a lot of their, of their theology. Um, but anyway, th this is basically a clarification and a public apology also to Pastor Tyler Baker because I didn't do my due diligence. It, to be honest with you, I never, even once he started releasing videos after the whole issue came, uh, happened, I didn't really listen to what he said. Uh, and even he would have, even if I were to listen to those videos he put, put afterward, he says he didn't explain it correctly, but it took him time to come to fully embrace orthodoxy. Um, but anyway, he has also agreed to come on the show sometime in the near future uh, to discuss this issue and other interesting things we talked about uh, that we discussed, which we had a great conversation. We spoke for an hour and uh, there's some things that we happen to be other things we happen to be on the same page about regarding fundamentalism and, and a kind of reformation from within that we both want to see regarding embracing a more historical view of certain things. But I know pastors are busy and all that, and so uh, hopefully we can make it happen soon. But in any case, um, that's all for now. I just wanted to make that clarification. I will be releasing soon uh, the next episode, the next podcast, where we're going to go through a lot of the heretical uh, theology of the new IFB regarding the Godhead, regarding Christology, regarding theology proper. So stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you. God bless you. Take care.